Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be cooking a three course Greek meal, basically inspired by our time recently in Crete. Um, and also we actually visited a beautiful Greek restaurant recently in Harrogate. All the videos to do with Crete, Harrogate, you know, anything that I'm mentioning in this video are all on our channel right now to watch. And those of you that have been watching us for a while, thanks so much for doing that. And you will notice it's just me. Now, Emily will be joining us a little bit later on, but in all honesty, she's just coming from school. She doesn't really feel like cooking, uh, which I can't blame her, to be honest. Um, but I really enjoy cooking. I, I love making meals wherever I can. But sometimes it's just time, isn't it? And we don't always have time. So I really made a point um, to just get on with this and really make a lovely three course meal. Hopefully it's gonna be lovely. Um, and Emily's gonna join a bit later on, or she might just do the easy part, which will probably be eating the food, more than likely. So I'm gonna be making three courses. For starters, I'm gonna be making a Greek salad. I'm gonna be putting together some dips, which are just things that I've actually bought from supermarkets. So not anything that I'm making fresh. And I'm gonna be making some breads. They're not specifically Greek, they're just flat breads, but they do contain feta cheese in them. So I I think it would class as something that would be Greek. So I'm gonna be making them from scratch. And I'm also gonna be making for the mains a Greek pistachio, I think that's how you pronounce it. Forgive me if I've got the pronunciation wrong, um, but it is like a form of a Greek lasagna. So it's pasta with like a ragu and then like a cheese sauce on the top. So I'm gonna be making that for the very first time. I've never made it. I actually had it in Crete in the a la carte restaurant for lunchtime. So again, any of you that have been watching our videos for a while will know we've gone to Crete and um, I'll have watched those videos and you'll have seen what I had there. Um, so that has inspired me to be honest, to just, make a little bit more in terms of Greek food and just do something a little bit different really. So I'm going to be making those things and for dessert I'm going to be doing a chocolate mousse which is quite basic to be honest, just chocolate with Greek yogurt and biscuit. So very very simple. So all of the things that I'm making today are quite easy for any of you guys that might be wanting to watch, you might be just watching to watch us make it or you might be wanting to watch to make it yourself. And I think most of the things are quite simple, but still time consuming in the sense that, you know, you've got to still make that time to cook, haven't you? Um, so I'm gonna start getting all the ingredients out. I'll show you exactly what I'm putting in everything. So let's get to the it. The recipe that I'm using is from mygreekdish.com. All the details to do with the recipe, I will leave in the description um, of the video. So obviously you can refer to that at any point. But I'm just gonna go through the basic ingredients. Um, so we've got, uh, pasta, feta cheese, and then I need egg whites for the pasta side of it. And then for the meat sauce, I've got minced beef, a red onion, garlic, a can of chopped tomatoes, tomato paste, a little bit of sugar, red wine, a bay leaf, cinnamon stick, whole clove, some olive oil and salt and pepper. And then for the cheese sauce, I've got some plain flour, butter, milk, two egg yolks, but I'll be using the eggs that I'm using for the egg whites. I'll be separating them and putting the egg yolks into the sauce, a pinch of nutmeg and just seasoning, which I've got there. So I'll just um, take you across all of these things. These are the main ingredients that I'll be using for the main meal. And as I say, the, the recipe is going to be on the description of the video anyway, so you can go back to it if anybody was wanting to make it themselves. Um, so we've got minced beef, red onion, garlic, tomato paste. It was just a teaspoon of uh, sugar, so I've just popped it in one of those little containers. And then we've got um, the bay leaf, clove and um, cinnamon sticks. And then we've got the tin tomatoes, red wine, pasta, eggs, feta cheese, milk, parmesan. I think you could use some other Greek cheese, but to be honest, I think it's quite hard to get hold of. So I'm using parmesan, which they said you could use that instead. Butter and nutmeg. So I think that's it really. Um, salt and pepper and oil. So we're gonna start by chopping the onion and the garlic. So first of all, I'm just gonna be chopping my red onion. I'm gonna actually run the tap a little bit. It might be an old wives tale, but I find it works. Just run the tap a little bit. I'm not suggesting waste loads of water, but just a little bit while you chop the onion. And I find it really does help. Um, so I'm gonna be chopping the red onion and then I'm gonna be chopping the garlic. So just into small pieces, 
and then we're going to fry them in the pan and a little bit of olive oil and then I think you just add the tomato puree and your mince so a bit like as if you're doing a bolognese really that's pretty much um, the recipe so to be honest I wasn't actually going to film this video today I've been really really busy um, filming another video um, the next two I think probably the next two videos coming up are going to be haul related um, so watch out for those I'm not going to say what they are um, but they're definitely haul and they're really good really good actually um, and I've also filmed something else which comes after that I'm not going to give too much away either um, but it's taken quite a bit of my time today so in all honesty I was thinking can I be bothered to make a meal I don't mean just for the video purposes I just mean can I be bothered to actually cook a meal um, and in all honesty, I just thought, do you know what? Just do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm never going to get round to cooking this this meal that I've promised Emily and Emily's dad. Um, and I actually thought, is anyone going to want to watch me cook a meal? I'm not sure that they're going to want to watch that. So I think I was feeling a little bit deflated earlier on, thinking, I won't bother, I won't bother. But here I am. I'm cooking it. I'm doing it. So I'm glad I am, actually, because I do really enjoy cooking. And I think, as I say, because I've been quite inspired recently with a lot of the Greek things we've done by going to Crete and the lovely meal we had out in Harrogate um, the other week, it's really inspired me to just do a little bit more, really. Um, until you get a busy day, like today, where then you can't necessarily be bothered to do something. But um, I think that's why I'm saying it, to be honest, because a lot of you might be watching thinking you've got to spend so much time cooking. And I think that is true, but I think sometimes if you just put your mind to it and sort of think, no, I'll do it, then it actually probably doesn't take as long as you think. Um, but yeah, cooking, it still is time consuming, isn't it? It's, it's all too easy to just grab something you put in the oven or whatever. But I do enjoy cooking, so I definitely want to do more. So hopefully you're going to enjoy it. So the onions are chopped and I'm going to work on the garlic. On the recipe, it does actually say just to use two garlic cloves. That's for the full recipe. And I'm actually only doing half the recipe because the amount of minced beef did seem quite a lot. I think it was something like 900 grams. So I thought that's a lot for three of us. Um, so what I decided to do is just half all of the recipe. But with some ingredients like garlic, I'm not going to half it. I'm just putting what I feel like putting in, to be honest with you. I mean, personally, I just think the more garlic, the better. So I'm actually using about four cloves of garlic which to some people might seem a lot, but we do love garlic, so I'm gonna put a lot, a lot of garlic in. I think another reason as well, in terms of thinking, shall I do this video, shall I not, was, in all honesty, because I've been so busy, I've got pots behind me, I've got washing that needed to be brought in, um, I've got lots of things all over the house in a mess, and I thought to myself, do I really have time to cook a meal? So, yeah, this is us, you know, this is this is me, this is my kitchen, this is everything around me. Um, and I think that's probably good to actually showcase that rather than cook a meal in, you know, fantastic surroundings around you and everything done and everything perfect, you know, because that's not life, is it? Life does get in the way and nothing is perfect and I'm starting to realise that a lot of the time, you know, I think you need to... Um, just do what you can, really. And I think that's the whole thing about the cooking aspect as well, that sometimes we all sort of say we don't have time to cook, but if I'm honest, I think a lot of the time we do. I think it's just we all sort of do other things, don't we, sometimes instead. So I'm definitely going to make an effort with the whole cooking because I do enjoy it. And I think even if you just try to do some basic cooking and not do things too extravagant that takes too much time or spend a lot of money either, I think all of these ingredients, to be honest, there's nothing really too expensive in the mix. I think obviously it does all add up, but I don't think, you know, I think it is all still done at a reasonable level in terms of what I've spent all the ingredients. So I'm going to pop the garlic now in the pan with the onion, start sauteing that, and then we're going to pop the mince in and the tomato puree and I'll get to the next bit. So I sauteed the onions and garlic for probably about five minutes and then I popped in the tomato puree, just fried it off a little bit longer, added the mince and then I've cooked the mince for about five minutes. 
So I'll just show you what it's looking like now. You, you're actually going to cook this for quite a while. I think it's about half an hour in the pan and then it goes in the oven with the pasta and the sauce. So, you know, don't worry in terms of your mince not being cooked or anything like that because really the frying time literally only needs about five minutes because you're gonna be cooking it for quite a long time in other stages. So I'll show you what it looks like now. So this is the onions, garlic, minced beef and tomato puree. So next we're gonna add all the other ingredients in, the tin tomatoes and the herbs and the red wine. So I'm gonna pop all of that in next. Actually it does say to um, pop your red wine in first and then let that evaporate and then add all of your other things, so your tomatoes and your herbs and things like that. So I'm just gonna add the red wine in now and then just let that evaporate in. There we go. Again, I've only just halved the wine from the recipe. And then next we're gonna let that evaporate and then pop the tin tomatoes in and all the herbs. I've added the tomatoes to the pan and the sugar. And now I'm gonna add um, one of these um, clove, cinnamon stick and bay leaves. It's just one of each into the pan. And then when it's cooked, you just take them out and discard them. So all of that's in, I've just seasoned it to taste as well. Pop the lid on and then literally just leave that for half an hour, stirring occasionally. And now I'm going to get onto the cheese sauce. So I've just had a nice big drink of water. You get so dry, don't you, when you're cooking or doing any type of jobs. So what I've done now is I've separated my eggs. All of this is in preparation for the pasta and the sauce and things like that. So obviously we've got the mince ragu cooking on the pan for half an hour. And while that's cooking, these are the next steps. So I've separated my eggs. So I've got my egg yolks and my egg whites. I've then poured my milk into a jug. So I'm gonna heat this in the microwave. This is for the sauce. I've then got my butter ready, measured in a pan. So my butter's gonna get melted. I'm then gonna add my flour into my pan. So stirring really quickly and then add the warm milk a little bit at a time to make the sauce. And then obviously there's other things that go into it from there, but they're the basics, the butter warmed up, add the flour in, keep mixing it all of the time. So I'll show you as I'm doing it and then warm the milk and add it a little bit at a time. In terms of the eggs, the egg whites I'm going to need for the pasta and the egg yolks I'm going to need for the sauce. So keeping them there at the minute. And then what else do I need to do? Oh yeah, the pan's on. So the pasta is going in. You do, you're supposed to cook it, I think, three minutes less to what it says. So this says nine to 11 minutes. So I'm just gonna cook it probably six minutes, I think, six or seven. Just basically, you don't cook it as long as you would need to cook pasta because it's obviously then going in the oven and what you don't want it to do is go really mushy. So I think I'd edge on the side of less time is better than more. So I'm just gonna pop this into the pan for six minutes and then the pasta obviously is gonna be done. And then while I'm doing the sauce and then the next stage of the pasta. So let's get to the rest of it. So here are my egg whites and egg yolks all separated. So then now, I'm going to pop the milk in the microwave, moving everything out of the way. Oh, actually, I don't think I showed this. Um, this is my new dish. It's actually one of the hairy bikers dish. I didn't buy it for that reason. I just bought it from TK Maxx when I was in there recently. Hint, hint. There might be some more things coming from TK Maxx in a recent haul. Um, this, I thought this was just perfect because I don't actually have a really good lasagna dish and it was 12 99 so I thought that would be really good um, because I've used other things in the past and other dishes and I haven't replaced them to be honest. So now I'm going to pop the milk in. I'm probably going to just keep an eye on it after maybe a minute and a half or so, maybe two minutes and then start adding a little bit of that into the pan once I've got this melted and the flour in. So now my butter is ready, so I'm just going to pop the plain flour in and then the idea is you stir it as quick as you can, just getting all the flour mixed in, just sort of lift the pan off just to take it off the heat a little bit. I've turned the heat off but obviously it's still really hot. So just stir really fast because the idea is that you get any lumps out of the flour and you don't get sort of lumpy bits and things. So that's all really smooth. So that looks, I don't know if you can see on the video, but 
that's all nice and smooth. So now I'm going to add, I've placed the camera on top of the microwave, really good positioning I don't think, but um, as long as you don't fall off that's the main thing. I'm not going to push the door because once I do that the camera will fall off. Um, all these things that you have to do when you're trying to film a video. <laughs> so we've got the warm milk, I'm just going to pour a little bit in and start stirring. What you've mainly got to do, anyone who hasn't made a sauce before, um, you know, sometimes it's not the easiest thing to actually make. Um, it's just a case of keep pouring a little bit and even taking it, you know, off the heat. Um, and just keep stirring and stirring as much as you can and try to just get those lumps out. I often make a sauce, to be honest, by putting it in the microwave, if I'm honest. But um, I'm doing it the pan method this time just to look a bit more professional. <laughs> um, as I say, usually how I make a sauce is often pop a bit of butter in a jug, Pyrex jug, in the microwave, add a little bit of flour, give it a good stir, pour a little bit of milk at a time to do this exact thing and then just keep stirring it. But as I say, I thought I'd do it this method because that's how it tells you to do it. So I'm just continuing. So that's kind of how it looks. And then you've got to try to get all the lumps out. So I'm going to continue with this and then I'll come back to you once I've done it. So this is now the smooth sauce and I've just drained the pasta as well. So now we're going to get to the egg whites and the feta cheese going in there. And I think it's the egg yolks, egg yolks and the parmesan and seasoning going in here. So obviously in between doing any of these things or anything that I'm filming, I am washing my hands obviously between the raw items and eggs and things like that. And obviously any of the utensils that have had raw meat on or anything like that, are all getting washed. I just thought like to point that out because obviously I'm not showing it on the vlog, but I'm definitely washing utensils and washing hands. I'm currently sweating because I'm absolutely boiling in this kitchen, but never mind. So we've got a cube of feta that I'm just chopping up and then that is going into the drained pasta with the egg whites and you stir it all in together. So I'm just cubing this up. We are going to get to a bit of a chat about the new movie as well, the My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. So we went to see that only yesterday, so I'm going to give you my thoughts and Emily might pop on then, give her thoughts as well. So I keep watching for that. I thought I'd wait until we're chopping up the salad items for the starter. I've added the egg whites and the feta cheese into the pasta. So just a pinch of nutmeg. So I've just sort of put a big, well, dash in. Um, some parmesan. Um, and I think it said 50 grams, which is the full recipe, so we're probably putting about 25-ish in. But I'm just sort of guessing really with that in terms of how much I've got. got the egg yolks going in. Which you have to be quick to stir them. I'm going to pop the pasta into the bowl now. So this is the dish with the pasta. So now I'm going to add the sauce which is cooked and then the cheese sauce over the top. So I took out the bay leaf and cinnamon stick couldn't find the clove so I've just left it in because I'm sure whoever gets it in the mouth will probably realise and they'll be able to spit it out. So anyway, this is the um, mince obviously on the top and now we're going to add the sauce. This is now ready for the oven, so fan 180 if you've got a fan oven. Um, obviously all of the details of the cooking instructions if you've got gas or, or whatever um, will all be under the uh, description of the video anyway. Um, but yeah, I've got a fan oven, so 180 for about 40 minutes. That should give me enough time to prepare all the starter dessert and obviously probably eat the starter while this is cooking. So these are all the ingredients I've got out ready for the Greek feta salad. So we've got tomatoes, cucumber, black olives, a bit of red onion, I'm not going to use obviously a full onion. And then half the block of feta I'm going to use in the salad and the other half I'm going to chop up and put inside the flatbreads that I'm going to get to in a minute. And for the dessert which is the chocolate mousse we've got some milk chocolate, some dark chocolate, a bit of white chocolate, digestives and some Greek yoghurt. So a really simple dessert. So Emily's now joined me. Hi! So we're going to do this all together aren't we now? Yeah. So I'm going to do the Greek salad which is obviously the starter and then I'm going to move on to the flatbreads 
but you're going to do the dessert because that's yeah. probably just going to go pop in the fridge. I don't think you need to do that far in advance, actually. No. This is a Greek mousse, a Greek chocolate mousse. So what you're going to need, we're just going to half the recipe. Why have you got uh, milk chocolate? Uh, milk chocolate, white chocolate. Right, because the white chocolate's going to go on the top as a little <gasps> garnish. Yeah. Well, actually, you could use a bit of pistachio yeah. on the top if you wanted, but we're just going to go with a bit of white it chocolate. It says 200 and these are 100, so... That's right, because we're going to do half the recipe. Perfect, yeah. So, so what you need to do, let me just look at the instructions first, one sec. So you need to melt both the chocolates. Together? I think okay. so, I'm just checking. So I've just got some dark chocolate. Really nice. We've just gone for some basic chocolate, chocolate. actually. Not yeah. dairy milk and Bonneville. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I always tend to find for cooking, I just find it, it's it's just cheaper, isn't it? And just easier. It's easier. You need to warm some milk up in the microwave actually as well. Um, to pour over the chocolate, but if you want to heat the chocolate first, yeah, I'm sure I'll wash my hands nice. for it to chill. Yeah, so I've melted, I've oh, melted, sorry, I've broken up all the dark chocolate and then do the milk next. Yeah, so you're breaking all that up yeah. to melt it in the microwave, yeah? Yeah, so I'm gonna get on with this salad. So I have a little chat, it's not a bacon if you don't eat. That's naughty, Emily. I'll allow you that though, don't worry. Not a bit. No, I'm okay, thank you. I'm gonna wait for my meal. Mm. Excuse me, I'm just get a knife out. So I'm going to chop the cucumber just into chunks, chop the little, I've got little tomatoes, just chop them in half, throw it all in a bowl basically, so really simple, and then I'll chop a bit of onion. So why don't I have a little chat about yeah. my big fat Greek wedding three. Yeah. So I don't think you really remember the first two, do you Emily? No, not really. Vague recollection. I'm going to put this in the microwave. But um, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't remember that much of it. No. I only remember like the little parts, you know, like some of the cast, yeah. I've seen them in this um, thing, I remember them from that, but I don't really remember the setting and the story. Yeah, I mean I really enjoyed the first two, and I genuinely thought that, if I'm honest, I thought a third one, it's not going to be as good. But this one, we're not, by the way, Sorry. we're not, <laughs> it's alright, just took my head off. Um, we're not going to give any spoilers, we're just going to tell you what we think. So. Generally, I honestly thought you're not going to beat the other two, and why do a third one? But this is actually like set that. in Greece, isn't it? Yeah, it, well, the other ones were they just set in America. Yeah. Um, yeah as far as I'm aware, as far as I remember, but yeah, yeah, the yeah. other. So this was set in Greece, and it, it was just such a wonderful <coughs> film. And I think because it was in Greece, and I think coming back to yeah, Greece, it felt more. For us, I think it just felt like really good, like a really good feel, good sort of film. It reminded us of three. Yeah, definitely. It was very fun, yeah. I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a really good film. What would you rate out of 10? Oh, I, I, I did give it a 10. I give it a 9. Yeah. I don't think it was the best one I've ever seen in my life. No, but no. Do you think it oh, no, but it was still film. a really, really good yeah, film. Well good worth seeing. This time. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely go see it. It's very Greek, it's very nice, it's got a lot of comedy and funny, but there's also some quite sad moments. She was yeah. bawling her eyes out like she does every film. Well, on a serious note, it does have, I'm not going to talk too much about why, but it does have a very personal reason for me in the movie. So for me, it did make me feel very sad and I did cry. Yes, definitely. Um, would I have cried at the movie? I think I would have cried at the movie anyway, but it, like I said, it does have a personal, deeper meaning for me. Oh, you all right there, Em? Yeah. You see, she's in the video for five minutes and she's already breaking my plates. Um, I'm only joking. So, Rude. it had a lot of emotion, which I'm not going to talk about because one, I'll get upset and two, I don't want to create any spoilers or anything in there. Um, but it had a lot of emotion, but there were so many funny moments, wasn't there? Oh, really? oh, I'm hot. still talking and I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just going to wash these tomatoes. Um, and then you're stopping get yourself going there. Uh, right, now I need to do the milk. So why don't you just do it onto the scales, that might be easier. Okay. So you just push all those things back, instead of using the jug, because it means washing it. <laughs> we haven't got time to wash pots now, not when we're in the middle of cooking. It's right. really warm though. Just, um, yeah, just get a cup, get a cup, okay. pop it on the scales, pour the milk in, and then you can heat the milk in the microwave. You're going to get one of my favourite, is this microwave safe? Yeah, that's my Yeah, of course it is. I got this from Coraleco. If you go watch our Coraleco vlogs, it's from the Ale Hot video. June, no, it's not June. When was it? July. July. And it's Coraleco in Fort Aventura. Each time you say Coraleco on any videos, I'm not sure that anybody will actually know where Coraleco no, is. No, it's because we usually <laughs> say Coraleco, but it's Fort Aventura, one of the Canary Islands. Right, how much do I need, sorry? 
25 um, millilitres because we're half, half in. This one? Yeah, yeah, the one that's open. So we've half the recipe. So Emily's melted both chocolates. She's adding some milk. It's fine, Emily. I always smell the milk because I have had a few encounters where I don't smell it and then it's off. You haven't. You've had one in your whole life. Oh yeah, but that, that's enough to scare me for life. It's fine. Right. And it's Cravendale, so it's... 30 filtered. grams. I did way too much. And just tip a teeny bit out. I think it'll probably be fine anyway. So then what you're going to do, if you just use the cloth to dry the milk off at the bottom, yeah. that's it. Pop that in the microwave, just heat it for like 20 seconds or something. That's 20. Perfect! Great. In the meantime, I'm still chopping cucumber, tomatoes. Really, you can pop in a Greek salad, whatever you whatever you want in terms of. Oh, you can put like loads of things in Greek salad. Yeah, all different. You can put different olives in. I'm just using. Oh. Did I just drop? No, I didn't. I thought I dropped a black olive. <laughs> You're dropping all the pots. I thought I dropped Ew. a black olive in the chocolate. That wouldn't have been good. Actually, it might taste really nice. These are just the uh, M and S. They're really good. Is very nice. Black olives. We never know, do you? So I'm going to throw a few of those black probably. olives in. Tomatoes, cucumber. 20 seconds of probably what I'm. About 15 seconds. So I'm just going to add this in. Hope it's, it might be a little bit on the warm side, but it's all right. It's a lukewarm. I think you need to stir it quite quick just so it doesn't all kind of separate the chocolate. Yeah, so I'm just going to stir this. Keep stirring. Just keep stirring. Just keep stirring. Just wipe all this. Little Disney quote for you. We've not got the biggest kitchen in the world, have we, really? Definitely not. We've got lots of rooms in our house, but the kitchen is just not. The kitchen's the smallest room. Yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? Yeah, how? Oh my god. Whoa. Okay. No, that's nice. That's fine. So right, actually, right. shall I have a look at the next step for you? Yeah, it's got like a rich chocolate icing. It's very nice. Right. Should I try some? No, it's okay, honey. Um, right. So, what you're going to do next is... I've listened to loads of songs, I'm honestly, I songs at the moment. So then it says, and add the yoghurt. So I'll tell you how much right. yoghurt. And then the next thing is the biscuits. So I think you need five, just before you add the yoghurt in, just leave that to cool a little bit. Five digestive biscuits, but you need to crush it. So if you get it into a plastic bag, yeah. and then make sure it's fastened at the bottom, and then just crush it with um, a rolling pin. And then we're going to add the yoghurt into the chocolate mixture. No! It's cheese. There's cheese in the oven. What cheese is it? That's your main. That's the um, thing Parmesan. That's why it smells. Anyway, got the five biscuits. I'm going to crush these now. And I'm still chopping things for the salad, so I'm just going to chop a little chopping bit of bread on in. How do I do this? Well, as long, well, if you hold it the other side, my hands are a bit wet. Okay. So what I mean is, you know, you need to hold hold it physically with your hand. Okay. Um, yeah, like kind of like that. Okay. So that yeah, then yeah, nothing's yeah. going to come out the other side. Otherwise, you're going to go like that to bash them, and the biscuits are going to come out the other side. So you just need to tie that round, hold it, don't hit the side or your fingers too hard. Okay. Um, just can I just oh, give you a piece of advice? This is what she does, you see. <laughs> I try and do something. Because you're going to hit your fingers. I'm not. Okay. Calm down. Okay, that's Leave fine. my bike. Right. I'll do it. Don't smash the work top. Don't smash your fingers up. going to add the onion into the salad. Oh, that looks stunning. Yeah. Pass me an olive. And then, um, there you go. Quite I'm just going to wash my hands and then pop the cheese in. What have you just done? Don't worry. <laughs> Crush all the biscuits and I'm going to add these in. So it's just five digestive biscuits. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add these in. Oh, wow. That looks stunning. I'm um, going to just stir these in. Oh my god, the chocolate's like quite hardening. I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyway, I'm going to add the yoghurt because that might help it. And I'm adding the feta cheese into the salad. Oh. So just get some great yoghurt. We've got the authentic great yoghurt. Because you know, got to love that authentic life. Just 
like we do as always, don't we, Mum? Yeah. Uh, right, 100 grams of this we need to add. Yeah, you're not supposed to put the biscuits in the chocolate. You're what? You're supposed to layer it. <laughs> Epic fail. Epic fail. No, that's Never a... mind. Well, listen, we won't worry about it. Does it matter if the biscuits are in the chocolate or separated in between the, the chocolate? It's the exact same. It is. But that wasn't the dessert. The dessert was meant to be you put crushed biscuits, then the chocolate mousse, then the biscuits and the chocolate mousse. Well, I'm fuming. Oh! That's okay, 106 fine. We won't worry about it. It goes down the same way, doesn't it? It does. So and let's not It's going to be a cheesecake. It's yeah. a mixed in cheesecake. Mmm. Yeah, help yourself. Don't worry about me. It's just some Greek yogurt. Um, that should, really just... should I actually put some more? Like, should we do five more and then do it as a layer? Should we do what, sorry, love? Five more and then do it as a layer. No, it's fine. I think, to be honest, it just means that it's all together. Instead of... Yeah, mind those glasses. So what you need to do next... Mix it. It's just fine. If you find those glass little bowls... Yeah, I will. ...out of the cabinet. And then just separate them into three desserts, pop them in the fridge. So you're having a little taste try. It won't be cold though, will it? Because you've got warm chocolate. Don't put your spoon back in, thank you. We don't do things like that. Right, so you get the glass bowls, oh, separate it into three. It's a bit dark. Is it? Separate it into three. What this should actually be like is a, like a chocolate mousse cheesecake because you've got the tanginess of the Greek yogurt, that's why. Yeah? And then you've got the sweetness of the chocolate. Yeah. So you need three bowls. And then pop them in the fridge just to keep them cold, really. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. That's the dessert. I've just finished making it. I'm going to pop it in the fridge now. It'll look yeah. really nice. As I yeah. said, they are supposed to obviously be layered, but yeah. I don't really know if it'll make much difference. It might make the digestive go soggy. But maybe, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it would. I don't think it Why would. Not? So it's just like a chocolate mousse cheesecake yeah. kind of thing, a Greek that style really mousse. Nice. So that looks really nice, doesn't it? It smells very nice. It's a bit, yeah. when I tried it, it's a little bit dark chocolatey, but it's all right. in the fridge. You. And then I've made the uh, salad. So this is just the Greek salad. I'm going to pop a bit of olive oil over and I've put oregano on it as well. I'm going to pop that on the conservatory table ready and we're going to get the dips out and then I'm going to make the flatbreads next. So I'm just about to make the flatbreads. Lisa Faulkner is definitely worth looking at her, all her cooking and baking books. I think she's amazing. I do lots and lots of recipes from her books. So the feta flatbreads what I'm making out of this book. So it's just self-raising flour and some natural yogurt. Mix it together to make a dough, roll it out, pop your feta cheese in the middle, fry it in a pan with a little bit of olive oil. That's it. Simple as that. All the details of this recipe I will pop in the description of the video anyway, just so you know in terms of the grams and things like that. But yeah, self-raising flour with, with natural yogurt. You possibly could use Greek, use Greek yogurt, but I use natural yogurt. That's what it says in the recipe. So I'm gonna to get to measure that next, then chop some feta cheese, pop that in the middle of the parcels and fry them off. So I'll take you with me while I'm doing them. So I've got the self-raising flour and the natural yogurt inside here. I just tend to mix it with the back of a spoon just to sort of get it together. And then once it gets a bit thicker, then you can just pop it up with your hands, just sort of knead it together. So if you pop a little bit of self-raising flour onto some greaseproof paper. This is just so that they're quite nicely floured and then they don't stick to anything. So what I'm doing is just get pulling together the mixture now. So as I said, I've done it with the back of a spoon and then now I'm getting it into my hands and just sort of knead it a little bit. It's very soft, so as you can see, it's very, very pliable. Um, but you just sort of get in your hands a little bit like that. And then what I tend to do is sort of break it in half, even into quarters, uh, just whatever you think, just what the more of a manageable ball really. And then just pop it into a little bit of flour, just to sort of make it a little bit more manageable to be rolling it out. And then I would say that would make another two. So really, if you quarter in your ball, so you've got about that sort of size, then half that again, so really an eighth. And then we'll start rolling them out. So I'm just gonna give my hands a wash 
and then I can show you what I'm doing here. Um, so you just literally need to be rolling this out just to roll it a little bit thinner. Obviously if it sticks like that, then obviously just pop a little bit of flour over the top and roll it out. So you just need to roll it out so it's a little bit thinner. Then the idea is you get it sort of a little bit thinner, pop a little bit of feta cheese in and fold it over. So I'll show you on the next stage. So then the parcel should look a little bit like this. So rolled out quite thin, bit of feta cheese, and then I'm just gonna fold that over like that. Just press it down, pop it into the pan, drizzle a bit of oil over. Now I've just turned over the flatbreads. I initially just got the pan really, really hot. So this is just a griddle pan. So you don't put oil in the pan, just get the pan really hot itself. And then just drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the parcels. And then keep turning them. Really, you should probably leave them about 30 seconds and then turn them and then they should be done 30 seconds each side. But I prefer them a little bit more well done um, just to make sure that they're, well, one, cooked, but two, I think they're just a bit more flavoursome when they're a little bit more well done. And the feta cheese, as I say, is in the middle of all of that. So wait until they're more golden brown or going, you know, quite brown really on both sides and then they're cooked. This is the finished pistachio or however you like to pronounce it it does look quite brown on the top but obviously that is the parmesan um, so I did it for the 40 minutes that it said um, so yeah I'm gonna chop that up ready for the mains but I'm just gonna keep it warm in the oven for now just while we're literally having our starter and the flatbreads are done so they should look like this in terms of the brownness on the top so they're just really simple breads with feta cheese in the middle so we've got our Greek table already here Got some Greek music going on. Got candlelight and all the starters here. So we've got the Greek salad, the flatbreads and the dips. And over here we've actually got the wine that I brought back from the Aquila Rizmina Beach Hotel. I'm allowed to bring it back by the way, I didn't just like take it. It was a free gift in our room when we went to the hotel. So I popped it in the case because I didn't need it with it being an all-inclusive hotel. So this white wine is what I'm going to have. And then we bought these from the shop there on holiday. So some olive oil with garlic. And then we've got, um, I think it's, is it Uzo or Recky? Anyway, one of the two, those as well. So check out our Crete videos if you haven't already. And here's our lovely food. We've got our mains here. Mm. Now we did have all our starters, didn't we? We didn't need to try them on a video because they were just normal dips and salad. breads and salad, which we've had loads of times before. Now I've never made this before. Obviously we've only had it on holiday. What do you think, Em? Mm. It doesn't look massively appetizing because it's quite sort of... It's different to the one we had on holiday. Is it? It might be to do with the pasta as well. It's quite sort of browned over the top with the cheese. It's a lot more like Mariah. The one was really saucy. Mm. Really good though. Mmm, it's really good. I get what you mean. It is a bit like lasagna. Mm. I think the difference is if you can get hold of a Greek pasta, which yeah, like I you could get from Greece, but it might be that some supermarket sauce it, I, I don't know. The recipe, they just said you could use pen or bacate or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I just used pen because I had that in. Um, but maybe if you tried a different pasta, it might be a bit more authentic. It tastes really, really good. But yeah, very similar to um, a lasagna. But yeah, very tasty Just less indeed. saucy. Yeah. It's very nice. Less saucy, yeah, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. So next we're gonna get to the desserts. Here's our dessert. So it's like a cheesecake with the biscuits and kind of like a chocolate moussey kind of vibe. Mm. So. Well, I'm imagining it'd be a bit like a t probably a bit like a tiffin, but um, you might need to move this way a little bit because I don't know if you're in it in shot. Um, I imagine it'd be a bit like a tiffin cheesecake kind of thing because mm. I think the Greek yogurt adds the tanginess to it apparently. So I'm gonna try it myself. It's actually really good. Mm. Very rich. Oh yeah, that is a bit rich, isn't it? This might do two portions. <laughs> um, it only looks a small amount, but actually it is really rich. Mm, mm. That's so nice. 
We forgot a bit of an epic fail. We forgot to put the white chocolate on top. And I mixed the biscuits in with it. But... And Emily didn't do it right, but... It's all right. We'll forgive you. Don't worry about it. It just is. You could obviously put like a little bit of pistachio on the top or white chocolate or... Garnish or... A piece of baklava on or anything you wanted, really. But actually, it's really, really tasty. And it is quite rich, though. Mmm. Yeah, very rich, but it's very nice. It tastes like cheesecake. That's what it said a rich on the recipe cheesecake. that it probably tastes more like a Greek style sort of cheesecake. But yeah, very good. I've been really impressed, have you, with all the mm. all the things. I think the mains was a bit more more like a lasagna. It was, yeah. Really. And it maybe was a little bit different to what I had on holiday, but not that far away from it. It was it was still quite similar. Um but yeah, I I've, I've really enjoyed all the three courses that we've made today. It's been very nice. Say we've made. I mean, Emily made the dessert and I did everything else. You're already spilling chocolate all over there. Nice, perfect. I'll wipe that up. <laughs> oh no. You can't take Emily anywhere, even in your own house. She makes a mess. Never mind. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. I yeah. hope it's been a little bit different. Ooh. And if you want to see more cook with us, bake with us, anything like that, comment down below in terms of what you'd like to see. I'm sure we'd be able to do a lot more other things. Yeah. We do enjoy cooking, enjoy baking. So definitely more on the cards yeah. in the way of videos. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch uh, what's coming up soon. Which, as I said earlier on in the video, um, if, if anyone was interested in those type of things, there's all the hauls that are coming. Um, I'm not going to tell you from where, I'm not going to yeah. tell you what for. And Emily doesn't know half of it because she's not going to appear in the videos because a lot of it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Yeah. So we'll see. So yeah, so make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. See you next time, everyone. Bye. Bye.